Joining me today to discuss cybersecurity is Phil Nere, who is Vice President of Industrial Cybersecurity at CyberX. Welcome, Phil. Thanks, Sid. Nice to be here. You know, uh, industrial cybersecurity includes a broad range of products and solutions and things like that. So just to frame the discussion for those that may not be familiar with CyberX, could you just frame where you, what, what, what you do in you know, obvious, simple terms and, and how your products differ? Sure. Um, so our company was founded in 2013, and we've built a platform that addresses a couple of key use cases for industrial cybersecurity. The first one is around asset management. Um, showing companies what devices they have, how they're connected, uh, how they're talking to each other, what are the communication patterns. Um, the second aspect is risk and vulnerability management, helping companies prioritize how they mitigate all the vulnerabilities they have. They can't fix them all at the same time. So how do you fix the most important ones that affect your most important processes or your most uh, valuable assets? The third thing is around continuous monitoring and anomaly detection where we have patented analytics. We're the only company in our space with patented ICS-aware threat analytics to quickly identify unauthorized or suspicious activities. And we've also spent uh, a lot of time and, and resources integrating with the security uh, technologies that most companies already have in their environments because we think it's very important to integrate with the security operations center. That is more and more the model that we're seeing. Um, so we have native applications for IBM Q Radar, for Splunk, uh, for ServiceNow, for um, integration with Palo Alto Network firewalls. And, and we've spent a lot of time building an open and interoperable system so that the SOC can very quickly accept the information that we're delivering. Thank you. I'm sure that, that was very helpful. Uh, you know, one of the big themes at this conference and a big theme in manufacturing for us is digital transformation. And I'm wondering how that's affecting your business and, and maybe you have some success stories where you're helping companies with that. Yeah, so digital transformation is a key driver in our business because what we're seeing is as organizations implement more industrial Internet of Things devices uh, and more connectivity between their OT networks and their corporate IT networks, that increases the attack surface and therefore increases the risk. And so at the same time as they're implementing these initiatives, they're also looking to strengthen cybersecurity. Uh, I'll give you one example. Uh, one of our customers is a major global chemical manufacturer. Uh, they have plants worldwide, but they're based in the US. And they were implementing uh, IIoT to uh, deliver the benefits that we all know, um, increased efficiency, reduced cost, increased safety. At the same time, they were concerned about cyber attacks that would, for example, either bring the plant down or cause a theft of their corporate intellectual property. They're very concerned about some proprietary processes they have. Um, they've now implemented our solution in nearly a dozen plants worldwide. Um, but the very first benefit that they saw was a very clear picture of all their networks and how the devices are connected to each other. No one had ever seen that before because in most organizations, it evolves over time uh, and no one really tracks it as well as, as you would like to be able to secure the environment. Um, but the other things we've given them is uh, uh, continuous monitoring so that if, for example, a third party service technician comes into the environment, plugs their laptop into the network, that gets immediately identified or any unauthorized devices get connected or they found, for example, internet connectivity it was supposed to be an air gap system, but they found connections to ESPN. So these are all the kinds of things that they can now very quickly react to. And they're now implemented in nearly a dozen plants worldwide and integrated with their corporate SOC and using our central management console to centrally manage all the risk across these different plants. You know, I, I know CyberX does a lot of research, threat research and following what's going on. Uh, so could you share with us, you know, what the trends are, let's say in ICS cybersecurity on attacks and malware? Yeah, so uh, it's very interesting what's happened in the last couple of years. If you look at the malware developed to target uh, ICS environments. Uh, WannaCry, which we now know is uh, developed by the North Koreans, and uh, NotPetya, which was developed by Russian threat actors, but in both cases using very sophisticated exploits that had been developed by our own NSA. Um, those, I think, were the first to wake people up to the fact that cyber attacks aren't just about stealing PII or financial information, they can actually bring plants down. And we saw a number of uh, companies in pharmaceuticals, in uh, consumer package, package goods, logistics and transportation, that lost hundreds of millions of dollars because their plants were down as a result of not Petya affecting their plants. 
And what NotPetya also showed is how quickly malware can spread from the IT network to the OT network over legitimate channels. Um, so I think that raised the awareness um, about the need for stronger controls uh, in the OT environment. Um, but Triton, which was the attack on a petrochemical facility in Saudi Arabia, uh, I think brought a new level of awareness to, to the world. Um, number one, it targeted safety systems. And it looked like the attackers intended to bring down the plant, cause a major safety incident, probably a major environmental incident as well. Uh, and uh, that was a whole new level of, of threat. But the other thing is that the attackers purpose-built their malware for the specific devices in that environment. So they understood exactly who the automation vendor was, what the devices are that they were targeting, and they built very sophisticated malware that inserted itself into those safety devices to disable them. We now know that uh, there were a number of uh, mistakes made by the teams in that environment. The primary one being that no one was really um, responsible or accountable for security of the OT environment. Uh, the local OT plant personnel thought it was the automation vendor's responsibility. Uh, the automation vendor made a number of mistakes in configuring the equipment and nobody was really checking to see that the controls were effective. For example, um, the firewalls between the OT and the IT were misconfigured, so it was very easy for attackers to get between them. Um, and so what that brought up really is the fact that someone needs to be accountable and responsible for security in the OT environment. And more and more now we're seeing it's the, the CISOs organization, of course, with uh, joint ownership of security, just like as with safety with the plant personnel. Uh, since you mentioned OT, I mean, who do you see uh, that owns it? You just mentioned the CISO seems to be taking more responsibility, but is yeah. it still owned by the plants? I had a panel discussion on that yesterday. It was very interesting results. It's, it's a hot topic, and we get asked the question all the time. Um, I think, again, uh, what we're seeing is that you can't expect plant personnel whose primary job is producing more of whatever they're supposed to produce with higher quality, you can't expect them to be responsible uh, to protect against nation-state attacks, which are very sophisticated. Um, you also have a large security operations center in most big organizations that's been trained in how to respond to incidents, how to uh, mitigate incidents. And so uh, CISOs are seeing a need to leverage that infrastructure in protecting OT as well as IT. Uh, so what we're seeing is a, a mixed model where there's visibility at the plant level uh, for the automation engineers. Uh, typically that helps more with operational incidents, equipment malfunctions and things like that that they care about that our system will let them know about. But then at the corporate SOC level, they need to have visibility, visibility as well. So Because if an incident happens in the plant, they need to know about it right away. So we're seeing that from a CEO's point of view, they need to be able to point to one person and say, you are responsible for digital risk across both my IT and OT. And that typically more and more is the CISO. You know, uh, this is a final question. Innovation is obviously very important to companies today. It's a very tough world. I know your business. I know your market, and it's a very yes. tough one. So, you know, what is uh, CyberX doing to innovate, or what are you doing to encourage that, and, and how is that affecting your R&D spending? Are you spending more? What? Yeah, so innovation is a key aspect of what we do, and uh, we, were one, we were the first company in our space to have a dedicated threat intelligence and research team. This is a team of very sophisticated, world-class experts who previously staffed uh, a nation-state uh, incident response center. Um, and so these people are constantly researching uh, what is the new types of malware, what are the types of campaigns, who are the adversaries, uh, looking for zero days in devices. And in fact, we've recently developed something we call the ICS Malware Sandbox. And this is a cloud-based service separate from our primary platform that allows um, analysts to upload files that they consider to be malicious and identify whether that ma that uh, those files are specifically targeting OT environments. So to distinguish from the run of the will ransomware that you might find in a plant, to see is this malware targeting OT uh, devices, protocols, ports, something DLLs that would indicate that was developed specifically for OT, like Triton. Um, and this is an example of the innovation we're doing because basically it avoids the need for each company to have staff that can reverse engineer OT malware, which is, uh, those skills are, are few and far between. Well, thank you, Phil. It's been very enjoyable speaking with you. Uh, 
T today we've been talking with Phil Nare, who's the Vice President of Industrial Cybersecurity for CyberX. Thank you for watching.